congressional district map in Ohio would last 10 years, but if this one passes on party lines in the House, as it did in the Senate, it will only be good for four years. And now, your Storm Center 7 forecast with Chief Meteorologist McCall Brideggs. And you're looking at, uh, at footage here, and it really puts in perspective, McCall, just how bad the flooding is in the northwestern part of the country. This is northern Washington state, more than a dozen counties. Yeah. Under a state of emergency. It's been raining since Friday, and severe weather is expected through tomorrow night. And here's what's astonishing as well. Uh, close to 5 million people there in the northwest are under flood alerts at this hour. And, and again, you can hear that, uh, that chopper hovering mm -hmm. overhead looking at you know, what those folks are dealing with here just, um, you know, a little more than a week ahead of Thanksgiving. Yeah. And, um, you know, your hearts go to that, out to them as well. You know, we're, we're, we're tracking rain um, mm -hmm. and maybe some strong winds tomorrow as well. Yeah, not uh, damaging winds, yeah. but certainly gusty enough that as you're traveling around the Miami Valley, you're going to feel those winds. And then the rain comes really after those winds are pushing in. But that's going to bring in some warmer temperatures for us before the cold front takes the temperatures away. Let's talk about that rainfall. First, we are dry. We have cloud cover that's filling in for us tonight, and we're going to stay quiet for the rest of the night. There might be a stray sprinkle or two about, but for the most part, we just have the cloudier skies that are moving on in. Doesn't look like a lot is happening, but where the cloud cover is stretching from the Great Lakes back into Nebraska, even into northwestern Oklahoma, Kansas, that is a cold front that's headed our direction. We're going to start to see more precipitation precipitation filling in along that line as it moves in for us tomorrow. Primarily tomorrow evening into tomorrow night is our best chance for that widespread coverage of some showers. Temperatures right now, they're sitting in the upper 40s. And if you're with me on New Center 7 at 5 and 6 o'clock, we were right around those upper 40s. We haven't moved much since then. And with winds coming out of the south and the cloud cover filling in, we're actually going to watch these numbers, numbers rising for the rest of the night. So by morning, talk about 6, 7 a.m., we're sitting close to 60 degrees to start the day. It'll feel quite comfortable, in fact, when you walk out the door. We'll watch those temperatures rising further as we move into the afternoon. A few isolated sprinkles really at any point during the day. So perhaps an umbrella, although some gustier winds may make it difficult. 67 degrees for our high as we head toward mid to early afternoon before we start to see some of those isolated showers moving on in. Here's future cast for the rest of the night, and it does show an occasional sprinkle that may move through into the early morning hours of Wednesday there, 6 a.m. For much of Wednesday, we just have the cloudy to mostly cloudy skies overhead. There's lunchtime tomorrow. I take you to 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. We see a little bit more in the way of a chance for some spotty showers to redevelop. Moving into the evening tomorrow night, we have more widely scattered showers. You see this thin line of more enhanced rain. That's the front that's actually moving in. We'll get widespread steady showers to pass through the area by morning on Thursday. There's 6 a.m. Notice Dayton and Southeast, the best potential for that rain lingering around early in the day, already dry north and west. As we get through midday on Thursday, we are dry, clouds begin to break northwest, and we'll end the day Thursday with some sunshine, but it's going to be breezy and much cooler. How much rain are we expecting? Well, especially southeast of Dayton, upwards of a quarter to a half an inch of rain. North and west, about a tenth to a quarter of an inch. It's not a lot of rain, and it's not going to cause any flooding for us in the area, but it will be problematic for us if you're traveling late uh, Wednesday night into early Thursday. Winds tomorrow ramping up around mid-morning into early afternoon and gusting anywhere between 30 to 35 miles per hour before quickly subsiding as we move into tomorrow night. As I mentioned, temperatures are going to drop once that front comes through. Tomorrow we're in those upper 60s and then low to mid 40s into the start of the weekend. We'll start to climb back to the 50s by Sunday and then we'll see another drop of those temperatures for the early part of next week. So here's my seven day forecast. A few isolated showers around during the day Wednesday, better chance Wednesday night into Thursday. Dry to start the weekend with a few more showers by Sunday. Might even get a few flurries around on Monday. And new at 11, the Ohio Department of Health reported the highest number of new COVID hospitalizations this year. The state said 459 Ohioans went to the hospital with the virus in the last day. The Ohio Hospital Association said all.